previously on Science for All. You have your legs fall faster. Here I have a small ball, here I have a bigger ball. What do you think? And now the answer. Around the year 1600, Galileo walked up the Pisa Tower for one of the earliest public displays of scientific experiments. From up there, he threw two balls of different weights. While the audience was expecting the heavier ball to reach the ground first, to everyone's greatest astonishment, the two balls reached the ground at the same time. Wait, in your experiment, the heavier ball reached the ground first. You sure? Yeah, you don't see very much on the video, sorry, I'm, I'm not an experimentalist, obviously. But it's troubling, you do hear that the heavy ball hits the ground first. And that's not what Galileo told us would happen. Well, you've probably heard the explanation for that, it's air friction. Air friction slows the lighter ball more than it slows the heavy ball. So if we really wanted to do Galileo's experiment, what we should do is do the experiment in the vacuum. And Brian Cox has a wonderful video where he actually does that. And you see on this video that a feather falls just as fast as a heavy ball. So if you do the experiments well, you can actually show that Galileo was right. But Galileo did not do the experiment himself. I mean, he didn't have access to a huge amount of vacuum like that. In fact, the story of the Pisa Tower experiment is almost surely made up, most likely by Galileo's pupil Vincenzo Viviani. And it makes sense that it's made up, right? If Galileo had done the experiment, he would have seen the heavier ball reaching the ground first Hence confirming the dominant theory of falling objects that everyone believed in back then. Indeed, at that time, Aristotle was regarded as the world's greatest thinker of all time and Aristotle had claimed that heavy objects fall faster. And it wasn't a stupid remark. After all, all observations confirmed Aristotle's principle. So how did Galileo come up with his theory of falling objects? How could he get it right if he could not do any experiments to prove it? And probably above all, how did he come to believe in it? Well, the answer to this question is just to talk about what I think is one of the greatest insights, the most brilliant idea in the history of science. Something that I actually only discovered a few months ago and I find it unbelievable that for over 20 years, nobody has ever told me about this amazing story. Namely, Galileo refuted Aristotle's principle of falling objects by using thoughts alone. On one hand, he imagined throwing a heavy ball alone. And on the other hand, he imagined throwing a heavy ball attached to a lighter ball. Which, Which one, one of these two will fall? fall? faster. Well, on one hand, the heavy ball alone is lighter than the heavy ball plus the light ball. So if you apply Aristotle's principle of falling object, since this is lighter, it should fall slower. On the other hand, if you throw this system, the heavy ball will be falling faster according to Aristotle's principle. And so the lighter ball should be some kind of parachute that slows down the motion of the heavy ball. So in this system, the heavy ball would be slowed down and should thus fall slower than if it was low. So if you apply Aristotle's principle and you derive the logical consequences of Aristotle's principle, you must be concluding that the heavy ball alone must fall slower than the heavy ball plus the slower ball. But at the same time, you should conclude the exact opposite, namely that this system, the light ball plus the heavy ball, should fall slower than the heavy ball alone. So applying Aristotle's principle, you must conclude both one thing and its exact opposite. Aristotle's principle is fundamentally flawed. It is contradicted, not by any other theory, but by itself. Aristotle, 
Aristote. Ça, c'est pour ta gueule, Aristote. C'est Aristote, hein. Aristote Now, what Galileo has done here is freaking awesome. Using five minutes of thoughts alone, he contradicted once and for all all of Aristotle's principles of falling objects, all of what was believed in about the motions of objects in free fall. I mean, think about it, it's as if your teacher was talking and talking and talking for hours and hours and days and days and days, and at the end you were like, wait five minutes, I'm going to show you that everything you said is wrong. And that's exactly what Galileo did. Now oh, that's pretty awesome. Now this story, is quite frankly one of the most amazing stories I've ever heard of. And yet, I've only discovered it a few months ago. I mean, this is the kind of story that I wish I could have learned when I was a little kid, and then again when I was older, and then again today. But I had never ever heard of this story until a few months ago, which makes me a little bit angry. In fact, what makes me a little bit angrier is the fact that Galileo is often regarded as the father of the scientific method, the idea according to which when you're doing science, what you should do is first come up with a theory and then test it using experiments. Well, that's not what Galileo did about the law of falling objects, right? He didn't test it. In fact, if he had tested it, if he had gone up the Pisa Tower and thrown two objects of different weights, he would have found out that the heavy objects fall faster. That's what everybody knew. So the experiment would actually have contradicted his theory. So amazingly, Galileo came up with a law of physics that was contradicted by experiments. So I want to end this video by having you thinking about how we come to know things. In particular, one of the questions that has been troubling me these days is what if there were no scientific evidence for Darwin's theory of evolution? Would I still believe in it? And I want to tell you my answer. You can give me yours in the comments. Now, maybe Darwin's theory of evolution is too controversial that you wouldn't dare to say that you believe in it, not because of the facts. Then what about abiogenesis? Abiogenesis is a theory that says that it is possible for life to appear out of something that was not life before. That life can appear out of non-life. And a lot of scientists today would believe in it, but why? I mean, there's no conclusive evidence for that. And it's not clear that it is a scientific theory to me, because it's not falsifiable. So if you believe in abiogenesis, and if you're a scientist, I guess you do believe in abiogenesis. Why do you believe in it? And is it scientific to believe in abiogenesis? And I'm going to end this video with a story about Albert Einstein, the greatest scientist of all time, and the man we're going to be talking about much more in future videos. When he received the news of the confirmation of his theory, of general relativity, he was asked about his reaction, had the experimental results contradicted his theory. He said, and I'm going to try not to comment on this, I would feel sorry for the dear Lord, the theory is correct. Hey, so I hope you've enjoyed this video, next time we're going to talk more about physics and something related to the falling objects, namely the theory of gravity, not Einstein's law of gravity just yet, that's coming soon, but in the next episode we're going to discuss Newton's, and in particular the question I want you to think about is, how did Newton figure it out? So how did Newton figure it all out? This is what I want you to think about for next time. You can help me have more subscribers by sharing this video and telling your friends about the awesomeness of science and mathematics. And you can yourself subscribe to the channel. I've put a link to my Science 4 article on gravity where I explain in further details uh, Galileo's uh, brilliant thought experiments. And I hope I'll see you next time.